Well, hello, Dick. Mr. Martin. Come I... in. <laughs> Here, I'll take your coat. No, I'm not staying. I'm... I'm leaving town and I just wanted to say goodbye. I've... I've enjoyed being in your club. Yes, we do have some good times, don't we? Yeah. I'm going to miss it. Oh, you have a job somewhere? No, not exactly. But I can get one. I can take care of myself. I see. Well, then you'll want a bite to eat before you go. Uh, how about a piece of cake, huh? Louise just baked one today. Well... Uh, I'll be just a minute. Turn on the light in there, will you, Dick? All right. Tastes good. It will. Thanks. Aren't you? No, no, that's all right. Is everything all right? Why, Richard Robertson, what brings you here this time of night? I uh, uh, Louise, fix up the guest room, will you, dear? Dick's going to spend the night with us. No, I... Now, that's all right. Don't you worry. No trouble at all. But, but I... I guess I might as well stay tonight. But I'm not going home. Well, we'll talk it all over in the morning. Yeah. Mr. Martin? Yes? What's wrong with getting home after midnight? Well, that depends. Dad's always harping on that. What time you coming home? Don't stay out too late. And if I'm a little bit late, wow! Did you have an argument with your dad tonight? Yeah. It's late hours this time. But there's always something. They're always fussing over me, choosing my clothes for me, trying to pick my friends for me. They don't let you do what the other fellows do. They won't let you take the car alone. They plan your time for you. Yeah. How did you know? We all go through the same problems. You're beginning to rebel against parental authority. But tell me, what happened tonight? Well, Mr. Martin, I just didn't even think about what time it was. How was I to know they were going to be waiting up for me? Anyway, it was just a little after midnight. What's so bad about that? Dad giving me this lecture about making Mother worry and how I was being unfair to them. So, after they went to bed, I packed my suitcase and... Well, here I am. Do your folks know you've gone? I think so. Their bedroom light went on as I was leaving the house. Do you think they heard you go out? I guess so. Mr. Martin, may I go to bed now? I'm tired. Why, of course. Oh, here, uh, you'll want this. Yes, thanks. Uh, Louise, is everything ready up there? Yes, all ready. Now, go on up, Dick. She'll show you the room. Thanks. Hello? Uh, just a moment. This is club leader, Mr. Martin. Uh, yes? What is it? Is it about Dick? Why, yes. I thought you'd want to know. Dick's here at our home. Oh, well, I, uh... Now, don't worry. You let us keep him here tonight, and then I can have a talk with him in the morning. Yes, I believe he'll want to come home then. Well, I... Um, all right, I... Uh, yes, thanks. I, I appreciate your help. Or maybe you can do something with him. Yes, we'll see. Goodbye.
Well, good morning, Dick. I didn't expect to see you up so early. No, I didn't sleep very well. Worrying, I guess. Mr. Martin, it was just plain silly what I did last night, running away like a little kid. But sometimes I get fed up. They don't see things the way I do. They don't seem to realize I've grown up. Mm -hmm. That's the hardest thing for parents to understand. Yeah. You mean that all parents are like that? Well, all of us parents have the same problem, the same readjustment to make. I went through that adjustment with my son and daughter. <laughs> I expect my folks have the same sort of problem with me. You see, we parents get in the habit of exercising a lot of authority. And we just don't know when we can safely let go of our youngsters. Your parents have been controlling you, looking after you for quite a few years, haven't they? Yeah, I guess that's right. So isn't it about time they quit? Perhaps, but not all at once. Now, let's look at it this way. A tiny infant, such as we all were at one time, needs almost constant care. You've seen mothers looking after their babies. Believe me, it's a lot of work. A baby needs control, guidance, a playpen to keep it out of trouble. Even when they're old enough to go to school, children still need a great deal of protection guidance and care from their parents. And parents get in the habit of exercising authority. The children keep on growing and learning quite a bit, but they're still really children. They still need parental control. Then within the space of a year or two, changes take place. You know Johnny Miller, don't you? Sure. Remember him a couple of years ago? Just a boy. And now in two years, what a difference. His voice has changed. He's grown several inches. He's beginning to shave. Last year's clothes don't fit him anymore. Neither does last year's behavior. Well, you went through much the same change. So perhaps you weren't so aware of it in yourself as in others. Now the point is that each of us Father suddenly discovers that he has pretty well grown up physically, and we assume right away that we're adults, able to look out for ourselves. <laughs> That's the way I felt last night. But there really are a lot of things that I ought to decide for myself. Such as what time to come in evenings? Remember, Dick, your parents are in the habit of thinking you need control. They have to be reassured. Besides, don't they keep their appointments with you? Sure they do. Well, shouldn't you keep your appointments with them? You mean I'll have to prove that I can come home on time? That I can be responsible for the time I come in? Yes, and for your behavior while you're out. Listen, Dick, your parents have been around. From their own experience, they've learned about a lot of things that you just haven't come up against yet. Sometimes their reasons may not be entirely clear to you, but they're good reasons, just the same. I think I see what you mean. It's sort of the same way I try to guide my kid sister sometimes. Why, just the other day, she almost got herself into trouble, climbing on the back of a chair to change a light bulb. And when I stopped her, she didn't like it one bit, thought I was interfering. But I only wanted to protect her. Well, if that's the way my parents feel about me, I think I get the idea. That's about the way they do feel. And your folks are still of some use to you, aren't they? I'll bet your mother is fixing breakfast right now. Yeah, breakfast. Come and talk to me whenever you like, son. Let me know how everything is going, huh? Yeah. Well, thanks a lot, Mr. Martin. I'll be seeing you. All right. Well, goodbye, son. Goodbye, Mr. Martin. Goodbye. Well, Dick didn't run away from home after all. He 
He went back home to face his problem squarely and to solve that problem, the problem of growing up and behaving as an adult. I telephoned Dick's father to explain the situation. And in the next few weeks, Dick and his parents came to a new understanding of each other. In the matter of hours, for example, Dick faithfully met his parents' request until they were accustomed to the idea of his coming home on time. Then one Saturday evening, Dick spoke up like this. Uh, Mother, mm -hmm. Dad, the gang and I are invited over to Frankie's after the show, so I'll be just a little late tonight. But I'll be home by 11.30 at the latest. Well, uh, that'll be fine, son. Good night. Dick was gradually showing that he could assume responsibility for his own conduct. Because he behaved in a responsible manner, naturally his parents began to consult with Dick, giving him a more adult place in the family. For example, Dick and his dad worked together over Dick's plans for college, although previously Dick's dad had simply given instructions. And in this way, Dick's relationship with his parents changed. He was no longer a child controlled completely by his parents. He was becoming more of an adult, with the place of an adult in the family. Dick is growing away from the authority of his parents and learning to discipline himself. He's becoming self-responsible. And we all must learn to do the same, whether this readjustment is painful or happy depends on how we approach it.